When it comes to robots, those of the humanoid variety seem to get all of the attention. But just as Homo sapiens are only a small chunk of the animal kingdom, humanoid robots represent only a tiny portion of the robot kingdom. So today, we're going to go on a robot safari. Prepare to witness the weird and wonderful world of robotic animals. I'm Drew Prindle, and this is Robots Everywhere, a show where we chronicle the slow but steady takeover of our future robot overlords, and show you how they're making their way into practically every facet of modern life. Okay, so broadly speaking, the kingdom of robotic animals can be broken down into three phylums. You've got robots inspired by specific parts of an animal but don't necessarily resemble the entire animal. Then you've got pet and companion robots. And finally, robots that are basically just full-on mechanized recreations of a given animal. Let's start with robots inspired by specific parts of animals. There are tons of these out there, but the best ones, without question, come from Festo, a German company that specifically designs robots and other machines that mimic the movements of real biological animals. Just a heads up, I am going to be including a lot of Festo robots in this video because the animal bots that they make are straight up amazing and you need to see them. This one, for example, known as the Bionic Handling Assistant, is a robotic arm modeled after an elephant's trunk. Since it doesn't have the traditional hard elbow style joints that you see on most other robotic arms, it's far more flexible and dexterous. This same concept was actually later revisited and taken a step further a few years later with an octopus gripper that instead of hard clamps used a soft tentacle to grip objects. My absolute favorite though is the flex shape gripper, which is designed to mimic the grabbing action of a chameleon's tongue. Thanks to its unique gripping technique, this single effector is capable of grabbing a huge range of objects, regardless of how they're shaped or what they're made of, all without damaging them in the process. That's an extremely difficult thing to pull off with a rigid clamp, and Festo's solution is easily one of the coolest examples of biomimicry that I have ever seen. But enough about robotic animal parts. Let's switch gears for a minute and talk about the cuter side of the spectrum, pet robots. I'm just gonna blast through these ones real quick and give you a straight adrenaline shot of animatronic adorableness. Okay, so first and foremost, we've got Ibo, the robotic dog from Sony that costs about $3,000, but also doesn't poop, chew on your shoes, or drag its butthole across the carpet. Worth it? I think so. Then there's also the Tombot, which is basically the same idea, but designed to act as a companion for elderly folks that are no longer capable of caring for a real animal on their own, but still want some form of companionship. This concept of companion robots has actually taken off in recent years, so now there's also a cat robot and even a seal robot for all of those rebellious octogenarians out there that want to defy the rules of nature and hold a seal prisoner in their living rooms. Okay, so finally, let's talk about the last category of animal bots, the full-on mechanized ones meant to be recreations of animals. Now, within this phylum, there's also two sort of different classes. There's animatronic bots, which are often used in movies and wildlife research and focus more on looks, and then there's the non-animatronic ones that place much more focus on accurately mimicking an animal's locomotion. The animatronic class is by far the most hilarious. You see them in a lot of movies, sometimes in big budget classics like Jurassic Park and Jaws, but also in a lot of low budget B-movies. My personal favorite of these is Black Sheep, not the one with Chris Farley and David Spade. I'm talking about the 2006 horror flick about genetically modified sheep that hunt humans and turn their victims into woolly zombies. I'm honestly thankful that robots exist simply because they made such a ridiculous movie possible. Now, outside of movies, animatronic robots are also used quite a lot for wildlife research. Take this robotic spy gorilla, for example, which, thanks to its reasonably lifelike appearance and built-in camera, helped filmmakers get extremely close-up footage of a gorilla family. Those same filmmakers actually pulled off a similar stunt with an animatronic wild dog puppy and also a robotic tortoise, the latter of which must not have been lifelike enough because it was almost immediately crushed and destroyed by a pack of elephants. Last but not least, there's the non-animatronic class, which includes some of the most incredible robots we've seen to date, like the infamous dog-inspired robot known as Spot from Boston Dynamics, who can do stuff like walk up and down stairs and dance to Bruno Mars songs and even pull a carriage with Adam Savage in it. But Spot is really just the most well-known example. There are loads of others out there now, like MIT's Cheetah Bot, which, as you guessed it, is designed to mimic the world's fastest land animal. 
There's also Cassie from Agility Robotics, which has the same leg configuration and movement abilities as an ostrich. And of course, this video would not be complete if we didn't include Festo's amazing robotic kangaroo. So to bring this robotic safari to a close, I'll say that while the robotic animal kingdom isn't quite as diverse and dynamic as the real animal kingdom, it's definitely the biggest and most exciting branch of the robotic tree of life. And because it's evolving so quickly, much faster than animals do in nature, there's no telling what things might look like a decade from now. Who knows? Maybe the next time you visit the zoo or go on a nature walk, there might be robots everywhere. <laughs>